everyone, my name is Deck Link, the trained on professional. Welcome back to Echobyte. We're going to, I believe, we're to TJ Rob. We're going to do what to do. It is a dull throb in my head when I wake up, a rapid enough rage of headache I had yesterday. I take some Tylenol when TJ goes into the bathroom, so he does not see. Why the fuck would he be against you taking Tylenol? I don't want to worry him. Oh, okay. While well, he's taking one of his insanely long showers, buddy, I feel you there. I have to go down to the lobby to get some breakfast. When I come back into the room, balancing two plates of bagels, bacon, and eggs, I'm surprised to see TJ is already done. He's busy brushing his fur in the mirror, trying to tame his comical, fluffed up look he has going on. I can't believe I forgot my shampoo. Look at how ridiculous I look. He holds uh, his arms out to me and Jenna. Jenna grunts, not really paying attention, as she types away furiously on her laptop. I think it's kind of cute. My leg is itchy. Why? TJ smiles. You mean funny. No, oh, <laughs> just look a little chubby. I smirk at TJ's mortified look as I set the plates down on the table, which faces Jenna to push her laptop aside for a moment. TJ opens a packet of jam and butter before spreading it neatly on a bagel cut in half. I watch as some of it sticks to the long fur around his mouth while he nibbles at it. He wipes it away with a napkin, only to start the process all over again. It's so sad that you're gonna be to spend all your time doing homework, Jenna. Finals are way too close to do much else, TJ. Jenna doesn't even look up from her laptop as she responds, focused solely on whatever it is she's typing. I'm pretty sure she just shoved half a bagel into her mouth before she went back to work. TJ sits there quietly for a moment, taking another bite. You think you'll have much time to do anything today? Jenna doesn't answer for a few seconds, the only sound, the faint patter of the keyboard. Finally, she stops and looks up at the fur for the first time in probably an hour. I don't think so. I have a lot of work to do. Why don't you two go out and do something? We will! It would just be nice if you could go with us. I snort. Yeah, come with us and do more work at Janice's house again. TJ lowers his ears. Again? TJ takes another bite of his bagel and doesn't look like he's gonna say anything. I sigh. Yeah, she kind of cornered him and got him to say he'd do more work. Jenna rolls her eyes and returns her attention to back to the laptop. Janice taking advantage of people? Shocker. Jenna. TJ protests quietly. You know, she used to give more, uh, give me some, some sort of sob story at the diner to get me to tip better. TJ frowns. Well, she does have a tough life, Jenna. Despite being annoyed at having to go back to Janice's, I find myself siding with TJ. I think you do whatever you can here to make money. It's probably hard to own a house just as just a waitress. Yeah, well, maybe don't be a waitress in a sheer crap town. She should at least try to find something else if it's that hard. TJ is still frowning his ears down. He can tell he wants to say something more, but Jenna is an intimidating figure to try to argue with. He's quiet for another minute before TJ sighs, before Jenna sighs loudly. Sorry, I'm just a little stressed out right now. I have a lot of stuff to get done. It's all right. I wish we could help you out. Jenna laughs without any humor. <laughs> I wish you could too. TJ falls silent, staring at the small piece of bagel between, held between his fingers. My phone buzzes in my pocket and I take it out, surprised to see a text from Carl. Yo! I stare at it for a moment. Uh, I type a quick hi back. Who is it? TJ asks around the last bite of bagel, holding a napkin daintily in front of his mouth as he chews. Carl. Jenna's typing stops again. Really? How's he doing? I don't know. He seems okay. I realized then that I hadn't really had a chance to ask Jenna or anyone else what happened with Carl yesterday. Where was he? Leo says you guys found him? Yeah. Jenna pauses, staring at the screen of her laptop. What happened? I really don't know. Flynn found him in the crawl space, apparently. Oh shit. The crawl space? For, for some reason I get chills running down my arms. What in the world was he doing down there? Jenna shakes her head. When I went down there, he was just sitting on the ground, and Flynn told me to leave. I raise my brows and give TJ a conf and TJ gives me a confused look. He was standing in front of him, so I couldn't see him, like if he was ups like if he was upset or something. What was he doing? 
Jenna shrugs. Flynn took him upstairs and we left after that. Was he, like, drunk or something? TJ seems to try and word it delicately. Jenna shrugs again and then turns back to her writing. He's always high, isn't he? I look back down at my phone. <laughs> Is he that high right now? It takes a second to figure it out. I do. I look up at TJ. What time does Janice want us over? We'll go in the evening when it's not so hot. TJ looks down and lowers his ears again. Because I don't want TJ to get all apologetic again and keep talking. Do you want to go hang out with Carl? TJ smiles. Yeah, that could be a lot of fun. Alright then. I thought we'll reply back to Carl telling him I'd be bringing TJ over for some reason, though I can't shake the feeling that something is off. Stepping out into the parking lot, TJ immediately starts heading for the road while I pause by the car holding my keys. Um, TJ turns around. Hmm? Are we, are we walking? I look up at the road, toward the foothills of the mountains, Carl's house, and intimidating spe speck in the distance, barely visible through the heat haze. Oh, did you want to drive? I shield my eyes against the sun, only ju just uh, only just over the mountains, but still promising a hellscape by noon. I mean, did you want to walk? I can see TJ's demeanor deflate a little bit as he starts walking back towards me in the car. Oh, you fucking f putz. We can drive. He smiles at me, but I sigh and shove my keys back into my pocket. You asshole! Dude! <sighs> oh, we can go for a walk. It'll give us more time to talk anyway. Fucking... No, I would have been like, alright, cool. I, like, if you want to walk, fuck it. I'm driving. It's fucking 9,000 degrees, and it's going to be even worse later when we're trying to get back. So, And we got work to do later. I can't fucking get dehydrated right now. You selfish cunt. Okay. TJ smiles and waits for me to catch up to him before we start up the road. While I'm not looking forward to trekking back to Janice's house in the heat, I'd rather TJ be in an upbeat mood, like he isn't fucking always. We're pretty quiet on the way up. It isn't until we're passing Janice's house that I finally break the silence. Man, why'd you have to say yes? I groan half-teasingly, shoving my shoulder into his, sending him stumbling away a little ways into the road. I'm sorry. Is it so hard to say no? Oh, uh, yeah, it definitely is. I sigh. It'd be fine if we weren't on vacation with friends we might never see again. TJ sulks a bit. Don't say that. It's kind of true. I remember that the trip is already sort of ruined because of Flynn. Anyway, it's not that easy, Chase, especially when she's all smiling and expectant like that. You should stop letting people take advantage of you. TJ stares at the ground. Sorry. And stop apologizing! TJ flattens his ears and I realize my tone might have been a bit too harsh. Okay, now I'm sorry. I was mostly joking, but it's frustrating to see you get pushed around. I don't really get pushed around. I ignore him. And get taken advantage of. She doesn't take advantage of me. Why do you think she only asked you for these things? He opens his mouth, but I don't let him answer. Because she knows you'll say yes. That's basically the definition of taking advantage of someone. I nudge him again with my shoulder, but he manages not to fall into the road this time. You gotta be a little more assertive. Stand up for yourself more often. TJ shoves his hands in his pockets. So just say no to people? Not just when it comes to saying no. Stand up to people who are being mean to you, too. I don't mention Flynn, but I'm pretty sure he knows what I'm getting at. I try to give him an encouraging smile, but he doesn't look at me. It feels great, man. Once you do it once, you can't stop. TJ looks away out into the desert. It sounds like you just want me to be mean to people. I shake my head. You can be nice and assertive at the same time. It's a good combination. TJ's quiet for a few minutes, and we start the painful uphill portion of the trek towards Carl's mansion. I do it because I like to do it, you know. Hmm? I'm starting to pant a little, my short, stubby legs already burning. I like to help her out. It feels good. Like, it makes you feel better about yourself? It makes me feel better about a lot of things. There's a sudden shift in his tone that cuts me off from saying anything else. There's a tone I'm not used to hearing from him, and I wonder if I went too far with the whole being assertive thing. I feel like there's a lot more going on uh, under the surface, but now doesn't feel like the time to delve into it. I try to think of something else to talk about to change the subject. Anyway, maybe the apologizing thing is just part of your heritage. 
TJ laughs, dispelling the tension easily. Maybe. Well, if you do go back, at least you'll fit in with all the nice people. It's just a stereotype, and not all of, not all that true. <laughs> there are mean people in Wasachua. Not like there. Not like here, though. TJ nods. Yeah, not like here. We're quiet for a few more minutes. Carl's house promisingly close now. I'm distracted, looking up at it when TJ's shoulder checks me right off the road, tripping me over my own feet and into the sagebrush. The hell! I shout as I land in the lay in the dirt, a dust cloud clearing to reveal a mortified TJ still standing on the side of the road. Oh my gosh, I didn't mean to knock you over, I'm so... He catches himself, though, through the horrified look is still on his face. They stare up at him for a while and burst out laughing. I see his tail and ears relax, his floofed out fur laying back down. He smiles, seemingly relieved. You're learning! He rubs his shoulder sheepishly. I guess so. We stand a good couple of minutes uh, on Carl's doorstep, ringing the doorbell over and over. I can hear the heavy beat of some hip-hop song through the door and ground. I swear the windows look like they're about to bust out when this, they're sh so the, how much they're shaking. Finally, I send him a text that we're in that that when the music finally stops and the door swings open. As it does, TJ and I are blasted with a wave of pot with uh, just as much booze lingering underneath. Carl grins at us, his eyes bloodshot and fur messed up. The fuck took you guys so long to get here? TJ frowns, rubbing his nose inconspicuously. I don't think I've ever seen Carl this far gone. I stare at him as he stares back at us, his grin never wavering. I finally break the silence. Are you okay? Carl suddenly gets a very serious look on his face. Chase. Gravely, he reaches out and puts both hands on my shoulder. I have. He smirks and then sets his face sternly again. Never felt better. Oh, God. Substance abuse is hilarious. That's the thing about this game and, like, extracurricular activities and, like, repeat and stuff is that these aren't tropes. We know that Carl is going through a lot of shit. And uh, so to see him delving deeper into this thing because he doesn't have us to rely on isn't he like using it as a way to give comedic whatever it's actually underlyingly drop dramatic so it's it's very smart how they're implementing it this way he brings me into a hug and whispers fiercely into my ear i'm so glad you're here okay he suddenly shows me back and whirls on tj who cringes i can like if this if we had started with the tj route this would be way more alarming but now that we know that he's like living in a possessed house or some shit like and the only reason he's probably drunk and high at the same time on an airplane with some crazy is uh the fact that he's trying to escape the hell that he's living in right now and it's not just like a, oh he's scared hell because he does have anxiety but also his house is fucking haunted and legitimately so and there's a fucking portal to some god for sick i don't know what the fuck I just want to know more! I want to know everything! Carl goes after him, sweeping him off his feet like the lings in his brand new bride. Is his brand new... Carl! Get inside where you get a heat stroke, fluff cheeks. I stand there on the doorstep as Carl takes the cat inside, TJ throwing me a wide-eyed look over the ram's broad shoulder. I stare back, wondering if this was such a good idea before stepping in. Pot smell, and spot Pot smell aside, the coolness of a mansion is a welcome relief to the quickly rising heat behind me. And I'm just in time to see Carl toss TJ onto a two-cushioned couch before flopping onto a bigger one across from it. He smiles at me and passes the cushion next to him. I sit down on the last cushion, leaving a space between the two of us. I'm just a little worried about how handsy he's being right now. Carl shrugs and kicks, his <coughs> kicks up his feet on the cushion between us, tapping me with his hooves. We sit there for a moment, an agonizingly awkward. Ten we sit there for an agonizingly awkward ten seconds before TJ clears his throat. Ahem! So, Carl, uh, have you been? Carl rolls his head on his shoulders to snap his gaze in the direction of TJ, who gulps. TJ, I've been PG. You get me? TJ's ears twitch. Yes? 
Super spree! Carl giggles quietly to himself. He stares at the ceiling for a while, continuing to tap me with his hooves. I look down and see that they're leaving hoof-shaped prints off, white dust on my pants. It's a crawl space. Man, I'm glad you guys are here. I thought I was gonna go crazy. How come? Carl interlocks his fingers behind his head. This house, man, you go crazy in it when no one's around. Flynn spent the night, but then he had to go to work. Ah. TJ seems to have run out of things to say, leaning back on the couch as his tail twitches around nervously. Carl doesn't seem to mind, though, staring peacefully at the ceiling. I exchange glances with TJ, who shrugs worriedly at me. I look at the massive flat screen. You wanna watch something? Carl flicks his eyes to the TV. Uh, have you seen the new Lucha Lobo movie? I have to think about that. Not since last summer, I think. I haven't. It's the fucking shit, dudes! Carl sticks his legs in the air, swiveling on his bit before launching himself off the couch to land on his hooves awkwardly. He stumbles, falling into TJ's couch. The Lynx tries to steady him, but the ram is off before he can, grabbing the remote. Suddenly he spins around and tosses the phone at me. He tosses his phone at me, and I have to lunge to catch it. Chase, please order us a goddamn pizza. I'm starving. Uh, what? I stare at his phone. He sighs loudly at me. The Keanu Zap, duh. It takes me a second to find it in a sea of random game apps. Uh, so, uh, what do you guys want? I'll shove anything from gals into my fat face. I stare at him. So order anything. Okay. By the way, this is not my typical Carl voice. It's cause he's so fucked up right now that I'm making <laughs> I end up letting TJ pick the toppings since he's the vegetarian. Uh, once I've ordered an extra large pizza, Carl's already started up the movie. I don't know anyone delivered out here. Carl sits down with a beer in his hand, and I wonder if I should tell him not to drink anymore. Honestly, I don't know if the way he's acting is more due to the pot of the drink. He grins. That's what's so great about Ganos. They'll deliver anywhere if you pay. He takes a swig and belches. Price of delivery is the same as the fucking pizza, though. Damn. He stares at me before pointing at his beer. You want one? I glance at TJ, who's staring hard at the screen. Maybe I'll have one with the pizza. Me and TJ have some hard work to do for Janice. Hard yard work. Carl wrinkles his nose. Lame. Do you want to go with us, Carl? Why would him saying lame make you think he'd want to go? Also, he's fucking pickled as shit right now. You want him out in the sun? He's gonna fucking melt. Carl thinks and gives a massive shrug. I can tag along. Really? <laughs> Might not be able to do any real work, though. He pants his stomach. Swear to God, I'll hurl. That's fine. TJ smiles, but Carl seems to be watching the movie now, which is already a few minutes in, in, into the intro. The pizza doesn't arrive for another hour, and when it finally does, the slices are almost room temperature. <laughs> Still, with the pizza, beer, and a movie, I start to kind of enjoy myself. By the end of it, Carl seems to have sobered up a little bit. Not a whole bunch, but to the point where he's at, le at least coherent. He turns off the TV in size, flat on his back on the couch at this point, his legs across my lap. I'm fucking stuffed. I agree, and now I'm feeling even less inclined to go over to Janice's place. TJ's pulled out his phone, and now he's staring at it with his ears lowered. I'm about to ask him what's wrong, but that's when Carl nudges me with his leg. Hey, you guys want to play a game? I look at him cautiously. What kind of game? Um... Carl looks around, then finds a row of three bottles on the ground next to the couch, two of them empty, one half empty. Never have I ever. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. This one's great. DJ gives a nervous laugh. But Carl, I don't drink. Give it a try. Oh, fuck. I frown, giving Carl a look. Or we could just do ten fingers. You don't have to drink for that one. Carl pouts. Wow, you're boring as hell today, Chase. I will do both. You guys can do the ten fingers bullshit. He struggles to sit up, burping again as he does. 
Well, he leans over with a groan and picks up his beer. Okay, I'll go first. Okay, I hold up ten fingers and TJ does the same, somewhat reluctantly. Never have I ever... Carl seems to think hard, then grins. Had sex. TJ's ears flatten and I glare at Carl. Really? We're going there already? <laughs> Carl shrugs. What? That's the first question everyone asks. I lower a finger, still glaring. Isn't this game about getting to know things about people that you don't already know about? <laughs> it was about winning, like all games. You shitting me? I look over at TJ, not surprised to see all of his fingers are still up, though he's still blushing. I'm surprised you haven't, though. You've had girlfriends. Carl sneers at me. Turns out having to lift up my own gut so they can suck me off turns them off. Never gone past that. They, so they still sucked you off. Christ. Low jobs don't count. We learned that from Bill Clinton. Uh, yeah, they do. It's called oral sex. Nah, man. I suddenly become very aware of the beat red link sitting across from us. I cough loudly and sit up straight. <laughs> Trying to think of something that's interesting, but still G-rated for TJ. Never have I ever been in a fight. A physical fight, I mean. We know that's not true. You've been beaten up a lot. <laughs> Carl takes a drink. TJ's fingers stay up. Who'd you fight? The fuck have you been? Remember Clint? Oh, yeah. TJ starts to lower his finger, too, then stops. Well, he mostly attacked us. We didn't really fight back, so it's not really a fight. What the fuck? What the hell? Grab him by the neck, throw him to the ground, kick him if he tries to get back up. What the fuck? What the fuck? I don't... I don't... What the hell? Uh... Throw him to the ground? Carl shrugs. Me and Flynn have gotten into it before. What the flying fuck was that? I don't... Whoa! Whoa! This game fucks with you, man. He already took a drink, so... I'll go over at TJ. Your turn. TJ looks off to the side, seeming to think hard. Never have I ever failed a test. TJ grins. I lower a finger, smirking, but Carl lets out a snort. Cute. The amount of disdain in his voice has me looking over at him, but he's already chugging down his beer. His burp seems to shake the couch. Alright, never have I ever kissed a dude. Carl! What? I've never actually seen you kiss Leo, so... Oh, wait, maybe I have... He shrugs again. I lower a finger, rolling my eyes. TJ, of course, doesn't. As I'm trying to think of my own question, I suddenly feel something warm pressing against the side of my face. I blanch away out of instinct to find Carl with his eyes closed and lips puckered. Carl! TJ sits on the couch, his face a portrait of comically cartoonish shock. Alright, now I have. Carl takes a big gulp of beer. What the fuck? I'm not sure how to react, but TJ's reaction is enough to make the whole thing seem funny. Instead of, like, sexual harassment. I mean, you can't do it after the question's been asked, right? Carl puts his chin on a fist, fluttering his eyes in a way he probably thinks is seductive. You can look it up if you want. I shake my head, wiping the side of my face as I try to think. Never have I ever flown in an airplane. Carl and TJ both lower a finger. Really? That's crazy. I shrug. I've ever been out of state in my life. That's... That's tragic. It kind of is. And so it goes. The game continues for another 20 minutes. Most of the question's innocent enough. Still, I notice every time TJ takes a turn, Carl gets more and more agitated. Never have I ever done drugs. Never have I ever been late to class. Never have I ever gotten less than an AA minus in a class. Still, I can tell TJ's directing it mostly at me. Partly because he's being mischievous. 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 Um... And partly because I think he's genuinely trying to figure me out. Carl's mood continues to sour, though, and it all seems to build until the sixth round. Never have I ever been in a car accident. Oh, shit. We know Carl's been in a car accident. I lower a finger. You've crashed before? I mock glare at him. Why do you automatically assume it was my fault? Oh, sorry. I, I mean, uh... 
My dad was driving and we got rear-ended. Oh. That's when I noticed that Carl hasn't spoken at all since the question was asked. I look over at him and see he's got the bottle resting on his knee as he watches TJ. I lean over to poke at him. You okay? He glances at me before turning back to TJ. You knew I'd been in an accident. TJ looks at Carl confused. I did? Yeah, I told you at the motel when you first got here. Oh, yeah, sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah, okay. TJ continues to look confused. Carl stares at his lap for a while, and I start to wonder if the game is over. And he looks up and stares at TJ, rubbing his chin. Hmm. He seems to be thinking hard. Never have I ever... We wait. Carl smiles. Never have I ever killed someone. Good. What follows is dead silence. Carl stares straight at TJ, still with a smile on his face. TJ looks confused. That's a weird thing to say. Is it? TJ freezes up as if ice cold water had been dumped over his head. I look at Carl slowly, but he's not looking at me at all. TJ's clenched paws rest on his lap. His face expressionless, almost as we both realize what Carl's getting at. We sit in that silence for what feels like almost a minute. Carl finally breaks the frozen portrait that we're all le in, leaning back into the back of the couch. You know, my you know my life has gone been going downhill since that happened. TJ and I don't say anything. Both of us watching Carl. School, great. Drugs. Whatever. I don't know. Seems like it all started after whatever it was that happened. Carl looks pointedly at TJ again. Carl. My voice comes out shocked and bewildered. Oh, well, I'm... I wish this game would fucking start saying that shit before the thing. Because the amount of times I've said shit that weren't in, in the way it wasn't intended. That seems to get through him a little bit. His long ears flick down briefly. TJ continues to stare back at him, and I'm reminded of how he looked when Flynn was having a go at him. Carl finally looks down, away from TJ. So I was in the crawl space the other day, and I found an old letter from Sydney. I don't say anything, either does TJ. Carl waits a while and goes on. I haven't opened it. It said it was a treasure hunt on the front. A treasure hunt? Sydney absolutely loved treasure hunts. He was always making them in his spare time. They were usually pretty bad, and the prizes at the end were always pretty awful. It would always take some convincing on his part to get us to go on one. I don't know why I have it, but it's made me... Carl stops talking and closes his eyes, pressing himself deeper into the soft cushions of the couch. Maybe if we knew what happened, we could fix some of our problems. TJ finally stands up and Carl's eyes snap open when he does. I watch him too, having no idea what he's about to do. Because of the look on his face, I wonder if he's about to actually do something violent. Attack Carl or something. His expression is dark, not like I've ever seen him, even when Flynn was yelling at him. Instead, though, he just stands there for a few moments, staring at Carl. Carl looks away again, his ears lowered. Self-improvement starts with realizing what the actual problem is, Carl. That, that didn't sound like TJ at all. Not even the voice. Carl seems shocked as well as he finally looks up at Lynx. Stop blaming others and start blaming yourself. His voice is calm and smooth, but ice cold. TJ turns on his heel and stalks toward the door, his fur fluffed out. I finally snap out of it and stand up as TJ opens the door. I take one last look at Carl as he slumped on the couch, his head down. Uh, I'll call you later, okay, Carl? Carl didn't say anything. 
So with that, I hurry out the door that TJ left open. I catch up to the links about a hundred yards down the road, trying to match his brisk pace. It's late afternoon at this point, and the heat hits me like a ton of bricks. Sweat already dri threatens to drip off my chin as I approach TJ. He slows down when he hears me panting, letting me catch up. We walk in silence for a good 15 minutes, and I almost jump when TJ finally speaks up. Can you believe he did that? I take a few deep breaths, gathering the time I need to form a response. I, I think he was just really high and drunk. TJ shakes his head. He knew what he was saying. Sure, but, but his inhibitions are down. TJ isn't as upset as I thought he would be. At least, not in the, the way I thought he would be. T instead, he seems more angry than anything. It's be I think it's because he's. I think it's because he's been talking to, talking to Flynn. Who knows what he's been saying to him? That could definitely be the case. TJ finally sighs and stares at the ground, his ears falling. I could tell he's about to finally start crying, so I quickly put an arm around his shoulders. It's okay. He was seriously drunker than I've ever seen him. He's not going to remember any of this. He doesn't look up. TJ, you are a huge reason why we've all stuck together at this point. TJ didn't say anything, and I see his eyes watering up. I could be making it worse, but I give his shoulder another squeeze. You're the glue. And like you said, Carl's blaming his problems on everyone else. This has nothing to do with you. TJ sighs, leaning against me a little. I take this as a good sign and nudge him. Listen, let's get to Janice's place and get those chores out of the way. After that, we can get some ice cream at Rat Ray's, okay? Alright. TJ lets out a small laugh and we continue down the road for another ten feet like that. And he suddenly pulls away from me, faces me, and hugs me tight. He buries his face in my chest as I feel his fingers clench into my, the back of my shirt. He holds me like that for a long time. We get to Janice's house and a good half hour later, me covered in sweat, TJ airing out his shirt. It's five at this point, but the sun's still pounding on the back of my head like it's a, like a dead weight. Janice opens the door almost the second we knock, and I can tell immediately that something's off. First of all, she's got no pants on. I catch a glimpse of her large white panties before I snap my eyes back up, staring hard at the coyote's face. I can't see TJ, but by the funny way he's breathing, I'm pretty sure he noticed as well. Janice spreads out her hands, grinning. Well, I'll be. You made it. We gawk at her for another few seconds before TJ finally squeaks out. Yeah, of course. Um, Janice suddenly steps forward toward the lynx and cups his face in her hands. I keep my eyes up, trying to focus on her face. She squishes TJ's face to the point where his lips purse out a little bit. You TJ are a lifesaver, you know that. She says it sincerely, and I can see TJ trying to pull back. Unfortunately, it also looks like the coyote has a good grip on his face, because everything but his head moves back. Eh, thank you, do Thank you, Danis. <laughs> TJ tries to speak from his squished face. Uh, Janice, what did you want us to do today? I break in, hoping to move her attention away from ripping TJ's cheeks off. She seems to be really enjoying the tufts of fur there. Oh, Chase, you're here too? Oh, fuck, she's fucked up. Yeah, we're gonna work on it together. Well, alright, uh, how about I head out there and show you two? My eyes look down to her bottom half for just a second and I immediately regret it. You, you, uh, there's no way around it. You want to get dressed first? Hmm? Janice looks down. Oh, that! Well, I just got to apologize now. I was in the middle of getting ready for work. I just forgot what I was doing. And glance at TJ, then quickly back to the coyote. Oh, well, we can wait. Nonsense! It'll only take a second. I'm left open mouthed, following the coyote automatically as TJ follows closely behind me. A quick glance around reassures me that there isn't anyone around at the moment, but if someone does come around... Janice marches us out to the back and to the few wooden remnants of the shed we had moved earlier. Uh. She points at the ground. I want you to dig a hole right here. 
KJ stares just silently behind me, as if using me as a shield to Janice's shameless of modesty. A hole? Yep, in a rectangle from here to- Aw, oh, Jesus. From here to here. Janice marks a line in the dirt with her foot before me walking about five feet in the other direction, marking the other line. And three feet line, at least three feet deep, if not more. I nod through her instructions, just trying to get through this as quickly as possible. Okay, what are we doing this for? Janice stops, scratching the back of her head. Mm, a pool. We're gonna have a pool back here. That's an awfully small pool. A pool? Yeah, a nice little pool. She grins at us. I quickly nod at her. Okay, we'll get right to work. Shovels in the garage, right? Doing everything I can do to get her back inside. Yep, need anything else? I can make a lemonade before I leave. No, we'll just get water if we need it. Well, alright, no need to finish it today if you can't. I know how hot it is. Yeah, his turns to leave, but not before reaching out and pinching TJ's cheek almost viciously. He squints his eyes, ears flattening as he st as he stands as he just stands there and takes it. And with that, she hums her way back to the house. I wait until I hear the door close. Oh my god, she's gone insane. TJ stays quiet, staring at the spot on the ground that Janice marked out. Seriously, maybe we should go. No, no, she probably just having another off day or something. I shake my head. And this is definitely not a pool. TJ kicks the, at the dirt and I shiver as I see a small spider skitter across the ground. Either she's lost it, and we're doing nothing here, or we're digging a grave. Oh, come on, Chase. This was a bad idea. I hear the garage door opening and shut my mouth. A car engine starts up and I see the old rusty white sedan pull out of the driveway. Janice waves at us and blows a kiss, which I'm pretty sure is directed at TJ. And then she peels off like she's drag racing to the diner that's less than a mile away. So who do you think she's on her way to murder? <laughs> Stop. Look at TJ. You think she even put you think she even put her pants on? TJ shudders and looks back at the ground. Let's just get this done, then promise I won't do anything, any more chores for her, okay? I sigh. Alright, just remember whose fault this is if it ends up being our grave. The work is tougher than I thought it would be. We both start at opposite ends of the little trench thing we're making. Janice said we should do more than three feet if we could, but this whole thing is bullshit, which I'm sure it is. And I'm not doing any more than a minimum. I'm just at least glad to see TJ returning back to his cheerful, bubbly self. We even got... We even almost got into a dirt clod war. Uh, but that comes so quick in when I hit TJ in the thigh with a rock-filled one. Ow. About two hours later, the sun is comfortably low, and we're a little over halfway done. It's at that point that I get a text message from Carl. Sorry. I know that wasn't his voice. <laughs> I look at it for a while until TJ finally looks up. Everything okay? I debate whether or not to tell him, now that he's in such a good mood. It's hard to tell exactly what will make TJ feel better or worse, I've come to realize. Still, I think he can tell who it's probably from already, judging by the slanted back, from how slanted back his ears are. It's from Carl, just as sorry. Ah, uh, TJ stops digging, pressing like a shovel under the darker, moist dirt at the bottom of the trench. That's it. That's it. You gonna respond? I don't know, should I? TJ starts digging again. Yeah. TJ tilts his head down. I need to apologize too. Now that seems more like TJ. Well, what should I say? TJ stops digging again and looks up at me. Um, I look up unexpectedly. Okay, so I'm gonna trying to be more assertive, like you said. Oh? I didn't expect him to say that. Is that why... TJ looks down, so I stop myself. Is that why he acted so strange at Carl's mansion? Sorry, never mind. What were you saying? So I'm just gonna say this. I was thinking about that treasure hunt Carl f treasure hunt Carl found. For a moment, I don't know what he's talking about. Oh, the thing he f found in the crawl space? I was thinking... TJ leans on the shovel's handle, looking away. Thinking that we should open it. Together. Okay... I say it slowly, realizing how delicate of a topic this is. Is there a reason why you want to open it? TJ sighs deeply, looking up at the deep red-orange sky. 
I feel like... I always feel like things happen for a reason. And we were just talking about finding closure yesterday. Okay. So, I feel like this might be a way to do it, maybe. Uh, read what he, he had to say. Maybe go on one of his last hunts. DJ swallows hard. I can sort of see where he's coming from. Sidney always wrote stupid riddles and stories with his treasure hunts. It might mean something to read something he wrote lo so long ago. Okay. I keep coming up short with what I want to say. Again, I could see TJ might think this is the answer, but I'm not so sure. Well, I guess I can ask Carl about it. Did you want everyone there? Maybe, maybe just us. We can let the others read it later if they want. I don't think Flynn... I nod quickly. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so you uh, want to do that tomorrow? See if we can do it tonight. We've only got a few days left, and this is making me nervous. TJ gives a tight laugh. <laughs> so, <laughs> fat. Yeah, Sydney's treasure hunts could be pretty elaborate. Oh yeah, definitely. We're starting to be able to talk about him normally again. Maybe TJ's right about this. Okay, I'll text him back and ask if I can call him. Okay. It takes me a little bit to figure out how to word TJ's request, so I just decide to ask if we can come over and talk. While we wait for Carl's response, TJ abruptly looks back at me. Are you and Carl um, friendly with each other? Huh? I mean, how he kissed you. What? No! I laugh. That was just Carl being drunk. Okay. TJ goes back to digging, his ears twitching around. He doesn't want people encroaching on his property. I grin. What, are you jealous? No. He says it way too fast and loud. If you want to give me a kiss, I don't mind. <laughs> TJ doesn't respond. It's focusing hard on the ground he's digging up. Aw, if you're shy, I can do it instead. Duh. Ooh, buddy. I see his eyes widen, but he doesn't say anything. I make kissy sounds at him, and that's when he flinks and dirt up at me, <laughs> splattering my pants with dark brown spots. Aw, oh, come on. I see TJ smirks as he goes right back to work. I'm thinking about picking up another dirt clod, but that's when my phone starts buzzing again. Okay. We walk slowly up the length of Carl's driveway, our shadows covering the entire length in the light of the sunset. TJ's starting to drag his feet again as we get closer to the door, and I stop to look back at him. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. You sure? We don't have to do this today. We can come by tomorrow. TJ shakes his head, taking another swig of water from a water bottle we we bought from a, the convenience store on the way here. No, I'm just a little tired. It's been a long day. Yeah. I wait for TJ to catch up, then match his stride as we make our way up the sidewalk. Then he then he, he then up the steps to the dua. TJ doesn't want to doesn't TJ doesn't do anything. Instead, just gripping into his water bottle, making the plastic creak. I wait another the second, then reach out across TJ to press the doorbell. The faint, fancy chime emanates from behind the door for a few seconds, followed by the clopping of Carl's hooves on the wooden floor. There's a pause when she reaches the door, and I imagine him hesitating as he reaches for the door handle. A second later, though, it swings open, revealing a very bleary red-eyed ram. Carl blinks at us for a few times through the bright orange sun behind us. Finally, he steps aside, opening the door wider. Hey, guys. There's a pause as I wait to see if TJ will say anything. When he doesn't, I clear my throat and step forward through the door. Hey man, you okay? Not really. I don't say anything in return, instead spreading my arms out in the cool air of the mansion. I turn around and wait as TJ steps through the doorway, the links framed by the golden sunlight. The fine hairs on his fur lit up in white hot wire, like hi white hot wires. I see Carl's hand that's not on the door sort of twitch, like he's grabbing something in the air. Hey. TJ stands next to me looking back at Carl. Hello. <laughs> Carl rubs vigorously, uh, rubs, Carl rubs vigorously, rubs at his arm. <laughs> Listen. Carl pauses. I get the idea that he's wanting to tell TJ to tell him that everything's okay so he doesn't have to explain anything. That would definitely make things easier. But he doesn't say anything, just watches the ram. 
Carl rubs by his head for a second, looking back at the door. Back out the door. I'm not sure why it's so hard for him to apologize to TJ. I had thought it was weird that Carl had apologized to me instead of the Lynx in the first place. Listen, Carl takes a big, shuddery breath, blowing it out loudly. I was really, really f messed up earlier. I wasn't thinking right. TJ continues to watch Carl silently. His ears are up, at least. Carl stutters and stumbles over a few more syllables before he continues. And I just wasn't thinking straight. He scuffs the hardwood floor loudly with his hoof. And I don't think you did anything like that. I was just pissed off. TJ is quiet for a few more seconds, but Carl doesn't offer anything more. So why were you angry? Carl sighs and leans his head back against the door, his horns knocking loudly against it. You said some shit I'm assered about, okay? It wasn't your fault. TJ folds his arms, folding. Look, yeah. TJ hold, folds his arms, looking down. Oh, uh, what was it that I said? Carl shakes his head. Stupid shit. I mean, stupid shit because of me. Stuff about school, car accidents, just, just brought up old stuff for me. Oh, but I don't think you ever did anything like I said. I was just being a huge dick. Sorry. His voice breaks a little at the end, and he quickly looks at the door as he's down. TJ is again quiet. I think about changing the subject now that the apology is out of the way, but TJ speaks first. Thanks, Carl, and I'm sorry I brought up stuff like that. I'll try to remember in the future. Carl shakes his head, looking back up. Not your fault. We stand there awkwardly for a few more seconds. I guess I thought maybe Flynn had been saying stuff to you. That, that was why you said it. Oh, no. Carl's non-denial hangs heavy in the air. I haven't seen Flynn in days, and I'm wondering what he's been up to in that time. I'll have to ask Carl when TJ isn't around. He's dead! He's on a hole in the ground! Uh, as of now, though, I want to change the subject because things are getting awkward. So, uh, TJ had an idea about the scavenger hunt thing. Carl looks at me as if just now realizing that I'm there. S scavenger hunt? Oh yeah, the treasure hunt. TJ scratches his arm, looking embarrassed. Sydney's treasure hunt? TJ scratches harder at his arm, looking more and more flustered, so I jump in. Yeah, we were actually thinking about doing it to maybe find some closure? Carl frowns. Really? TJ stops scratching at his arm, his ears coming back up. Yeah, yeah, I believe things happen for a reason. That you found it now while we're all here means something, I think. Man, I mean, it's really old. You even think any of that stuff would be out there right now? Maybe, uh, but I guess I'm not really looking to find anything. It's just like a thing we can do while we remember him. I think it's a good way to find closure. I try to back up TJ. Uh, I try to back TJ up under Carl's somewhat bewildered stare. The ram strokes his chin. I guess that sort of makes sense. I mean, if you're okay with doing it. TJ squares his stance. Oh, <gasps> looking up. I am. It's been so long feeling this way. I feel like this might be my our last chance to do something. Carl looks over at me. I nod, indicating I feel the same way. I don't fully understand this new direction in TJ either, but I sure as hell wasn't supporting him. Well, okay then. I'll go grab it. Wanna just open it now? Let's, uh, let's go to the motel or something, with Jenna there too. Okay. Carl finally shuts the door before making his way to the stairs. TJ seems to deflate then, his shoulders hunching back in. That wasn't so bad. I mumbled to him once, I think Carl's out of earshot. Uh, uh. Yeah, it was okay. We stand there awkwardly as we wait. The whole situation is so strange. Carl comes back with a crumpled-looking white envelope in his hands. TJ eyes it, the first standing up on the back of his neck. So, uh, you dudes want to drive back to the motel, or...? Actually, we didn't drive. Carl drops his hands to his sides. 
Are you f freaking serious? I can't walk in that heat. TJ did. I tug up some of the fur in the lynx's neck just to show Carl. TJ actually jumps a bit, and I quickly let go. I want to ask him what's wrong, but Carl keeps talking. Man, I'm gonna smell like shit once we get there. The sun's almost gone anyway, Carl smirks at me. I sweat walking in the winter time. You can take a shower at the motel. Carl blows his breath out loudly, frowning. Okay, but I'm gonna put on more deodorant before we go. The walk back isn't so bad. Carl makes it out to be a lot worse than it is with all the gasping and wiping his face constantly. TJ gets a text from Jenna to meet at the diner instead of the motel since we're going, she's going there for dinner anyway. Once we walk in, Carl lets out a gr gasping groan of relief that turns a few heads. Jenna looks up from the corner booth and waves at us. I wave back and start making my way over. Going to the bathroom, gotta wipe my pits. TJ makes a sour face as he follows me to the table. Jenna scoots in so we can slide we can slide in next to her. So what's this all about? Carl found a treasure hunt that Sydney made. Jenna toys with her brown leather purse, staring at it. Okay, like a map or something? A letter. What are you gonna do with it? Well, I look over at TJ, but he doesn't say anything, instead looking out the window at the sunset. We're thinking about doing it. You're thinking about going on the treasure hunt? Yeah. I mean... Jenna pauses, clearly trying to choose her words carefully. I mean, would there be anything left of it at this point? I would. Ha it would have to be at least 11 years old by now. Jenna looks over at TJ, studying his reaction. He doesn't give her anything, though, still staring out of the window. I spread my hands out on the table, instantly regretting it as I feel the grease slide out under the pads. We're seeing it more as a closure sort of thing, a send-off. We're not really expecting to find something. TJ finally looks back at us. He made it for us, so I feel like we should do it. For him. <clears throat> Jenna stares back down at her purse. I guess Flynn won't be involved? No. And Leo? He's gonna be busy for the most of the week. I don't think he'd really want to anyway. Why not? Now TJ looks like he's trying to choose his words carefully. He pretends like it never happened. I don't want to bring it back up for him. No one says anything else until Carl shows back up, the fur on his head and face a little wet. Hey Jenna. Carl? Jenna nods at him as he sits across from me. He reaches across the table, snatching up a menu and from the metal holder in the center. I'll pay if anyone wants something. Jenna curls her a lip in disgust, but I'm starving, so I start browsing the menu as well. TJ goes back to staring out of the window, and I can see his ears twitching around. So, where's this treasure hunt thing? Carl looks up and sees that Jenna is staring at him. Huh? Oh, I have it. I'm going to order real quick, though, if Chase is ready. I nod, and Carl waves his menu at Janice, who quickly bustles our way with a tray of glasses and of water. She's wearing pants now, but there's definitely still something off about her. Her eyes are wide, her smile more like a grimace as she sets down our glasses and straws. She's on meth! Meth man! Woman! Woman! She takes our orders well enough, though, and Jenna waits patiently as Carl and I order a meal and TJ gets a smoothie. Carl methodically tears off one end of the wrapper of his straw before he blows at the other end, shooting the rest of the wrapper at me. I flinch and try to catch it, failing as, a, as it falls to the floor. Jenna clears her throat loudly. So where is it? Carl looks at her, the straw still in his mouth. Oh, oh, oh right. Carl reaches into his pocket and pulls out the envelope. He pushes it onto the table face up. There's writing and black marker on the front. Treasure hunt number seven. We all stare at it. Uh, should I read it? Carl sets a hand down on the letter. Or someone else? Carl's eyes briefly flick over to TJ, then quickly look back down at the letter. TJ's hand comes up, then surreptitiously scratches at an ear before letting it fall back into his lap. It does seem appropriate that TJ open it, but if he doesn't want to... Carl looks just as hesitant, so I finally reach out and gently slide it down from under his hand. I can read it. 
No one objects, so I open it carefully, not wanting to rip anything as I pry the adhesive apart. A chill goes up my spine for some reason. A strange, surreal vision comes to my mind's eye of inky blackness leaking out of the envelope, spilling slowly across the table. I can feel it, too, like a cold draft is wafting from inside. I pause, feeling an emptiness in my chest. The hell? I give my head a small shake, breaking out of the trance. I guess it's only natural I feel this way. That's Sidney's handwriting on the letter, sealed after he licked it. He loved making these treasure hunts. It's really sad, so it makes sense that I'd feel a sudden drop in mood. I swallow as I continue to pry it open, the feeling getting worse and worse as I do. When it's finally fully open, the feeling slowly subsides. Tension in the air seems to melt away, too, like the whole town just let out a sigh of relief. I look up for a moment at the others, wondering if they're feeling the same way. It's hard to tell as they're all looking intently down at my hands. I quickly look down again and stick my fingers inside, feeling a piece of paper catch on the pad. Gently, I press down on it and slowly slide it from the envelope. It's bright, it's a, it's bright white copy paper, folded once in half. It's been creased so long that it starts to part at the fold in the middle parts so the edges are barely holding it together. Black blotches bleed through the paper, probably written with some uh, the same thick marker that was used for the envelope. I gently unfold it, not wanting to rip it apart more than it already had been. The big blocky le black letters are sloppy and childish. Even though it's only a few sentences, it covers the entire page. The last few words trail off into tiny, almost ineligible scrawl. It droops da off down the side of the paper as Sidney realized he'd ran out of room at the end. Okay, um... I clear my throat and then start reading aloud. Welcome to the treasure hunt number seven. This is the biggest one so far and it took a long time. So no cheating this time. I'm talking about you, Carl and Chase. No skipping steps. First clue. These things fly really high. It's in their home with my comb. Chase, you don't have to do this one. I know you hate it. You'll see if you figure it out. Good luck, guys. Sid. I feel my throat close up just a little as I stare down at his name. He always wanted to go by Sid, but it never stuck, so no one else, none of us ever did. It just doesn't suit him. I look back up at the others. Carl is still staring at the paper, and TJ is looking out the window again. Jenna has a hand up to her mouth, staring as well. Wow. And she wipes her eye, and I look away. I guess I never really thought about how this might affect Jenna. She and Sydney never really got along because of the way he treated TJ. But still, he was just a kid like the rest of us. Carl lets out a ragged cough. Uh, that whole cheating thing was totally you, Chase, not me. <laughs> Look up at Carl, raising a brow. The one that told me to do it. Carl smirks. And you're the one that did it. What'd you do? TJ asks quietly from the corner, finally looking away from the window. Well, Sydney liked to rescue, reuse certain hiding spots. I mean, there were only so many places he could use. Yeah, and Chase went straight to Sydney's mailbox and ruined the whole thing like a boss. I was like eight. Turns out it was the last spot and he got the prize. Carl makes finger quotes around the last word. Yeah, one of those plastic clapper things we used to get in elementary school for reading a lot. He was so mad. <laughs> yeah. I remember dropping it on the ground because of how lame it was. I also remember Sydney crying, but I'm not going to bring that up. Carl seems to have at least lightened the mood, though, and Jenna stopped wiping at her eyes. I'm starting to think TJ was right about this whole closure thing. I know where he's talking about for this one, though. I tap the paper with a finger. Yeah, it's the birdhouse. Bird Birdhouse? Where's that? The forest. TJ, there's a forest in this desert now? What the fuck? TJ sits up straight, her ears up as well. Their birdhouse is on one of the trees close to the road. Oh, well, I never went in there because of all the sh sorry stuff that uh, would get in my fur. And TJ looks back out the window. The sun gone now, though the clouds in the sky are still tinged red. You guys want to do it tonight? Really? It's getting kind of late and we still gotta eat. 
Carl looks eagerly over at the front counter, though the small rectangle that leads to the kitchen. We can use Chase's car. Besides, it might get kind of fun in the dark. Yeah, and dangerous, asshole. AJ heads the last bit meekly. Uh, uh, hell no. As long as you guys know where it is, it shouldn't be a problem. I gently fold the litter back up and start tucking it into the back into the envelope. Uh, what was, what do you mean by you didn't have to do that one, Chase? I look up at TJ, then back down a letter as I gently press the lid of the envelope closed. I thought I saw something and got scared one time. It was a long time ago, though. At least that's what I think he was talking about. Jenna clears her throat, seeming to have collected herself. I think I remember that. My parents told me about it. I frown. Really? I didn't like the idea of that. What'd you see? I shrug. A person in the trees. A hanging person. Oh fuck. Oh fuck, man. Oh. TJ shudders. So hell fucking no, we're going there tonight then. Sorry for using the F word, Teach. It's fine, I saw a lot of things as a kid. I'm not gonna tell him how I'm definitely still scared of that place. Besides, TJ looks really eager to start this, so I'm not gonna ruin it for him. But really, that's not what's bothering me right now. I look down at my hands as I try to work out a timeline in my head. When was it this incident happened in the forest? I thought it had been 10 at the time since that was when I started going to a psychiatrist. And I'd started going because of that. But that would be impossible because... Here we are! A plate with a massive burger and steak fries lands in front of my face. The big coyote sets a smoothie down for TJ and an even bigger veggie burger down for Carl. Hey Janice, is Julian working today? Janice smiles at TJ. No, Daisy, he's the only one here when I'm not. He'll be in tomorrow if you're looking for looking to find him. This episode is taking a long time. So now look at the time. Look, y'all aren't seeing this. I don't know what you're seeing. Right now, I'm transferring the files because my phone camera, I use, to, in order to record my face cam, I use the, um, the old phone I had. It. It's a Galaxy something, I think it's like a 3, maybe. Problem is, is that the storage space on it is so fucking small that, uh, it doesn't fucking last a while. And I would just use my new phone, problem is the thing I use to prop up my, the phone I use to record the face cam, won't fit with uh, my new phone, because I got the S8 Plus. And I only got the plus because I, I didn't know it was bigger because I'm fucking stupid. But, um, yeah. Right now I'm just sort of sitting here waiting for files to transfer. But I can't stop the audio or the game recording or else everything will get desynced and I have to fucking sync it up again. So that's lovely. I guess I'll take this moment to thank all of you if any of you have gotten this far. If you have, comment, in, comment down below your favorite color of makeup. I don't know, like lipstick. What's your favorite color of lipstick? And make sure you use the word lipstick so I know what the fuck you're talking about. If I just get a bunch of like red, blue, then some people will see that and just start color commenting colors. So, uh, just like my favorite lipstick, me personally, I, I really like more subtle tones. I've never really liked the bright red fucking lipstick. Um, pink. Pink can work, because pink is kind of subtle. Probably just like, I don't know what the lipstick stuff is, but it's just like, it's on the little stick. It's like a gloss. Lip gloss, I think is what it's called. I like that. But, uh, but yeah, anything that's too loud or too dark, I'm not a big fan of for lipstick, because um, it just, it, it seems impractical and unnatural. I don't know. I've never really been into the appearance of looking like you have makeup on i have nothing I, I have nothing against people who want to use it and i fully believe if you if you as long as you're not hurting yourself or others you do whatever the fuck you want and if you want to fucking paint your face up there are a lot of people who do very cool very nice looking very intricate and very it takes a lot of talent to do makeup properly just at a baseline, but people who do makeup, like for cosplay, can make themselves look like other characters and shit. It's 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 super fucking talented, and I I really admire people who can do that. But um, for me, uh, 
I've just not, it, it, when it comes to personal tastes, that it, it really is just like a uh, a personal taste type of thing, and and it's like the same thing goes for like for guys because I'm I'm a bi so I'm a bi I'm bisexual, something that Daystorm Power doesn't believe exists. Um, yeah, fun fact: if you ever heard Daystorm Power, he's uh, he's a big YouTuber, does music, uh, also was big on Vine. Um, I remember watching a video of, of his a long time ago where he basically, yeah, he flat out said he doesn't believe in bisexuality. He says, if you're a guy and you like guys, you're gay. And he even made this joke. He's like, oh, I'm trisexual. I like men, I like women, and I like horses. It was like, bruh, if you honestly believe that there's even anything remotely clo close to that, like, just being bisexual doesn't mean you're into horses and shit. It just means you're into different variety of humans. But the point is... Uh, oh, hey, Bree. What's up? I'm hungry. Well, I need food. No. See, that, this is the kind of shit. She says, I'm hungry. I say, get food. She says, no. Fuck you. Yeah. Like, when it comes to guys, like... I don't like. I'm not as attracted to the the huge muscle dudes that you see on extracurricular activities. I'm when it comes to me, I much prefer. Oh fuck! Is audacity fucking up again? Oh shit! The whole computer fucked up for a little bit. But uh, I much prefer the smaller, kind of somewhat feminine-looking guys. And that, you know, I've been told before that it's like. If you if you are bisexual as a guy, but you only like feminine looking guys, and you're not really bisexual, and I think that's like I think that's fucked up. I really do think that's fucked up because it's like if I like what I like, then why the fuck do you give a shit? Because it doesn't it doesn't matter to you, or at least it fucking shouldn't. It doesn't affect you in any way. Anyway, I'm gonna start the fucking uh, voy uh, face cam back up again because the files finally transferred, and we can finally get back to the feckin' game. So I'm going to start the face cam now. It should be starting up any second now. Maybe it popped up. Breeze dancing. Breeze dancing. Dance, 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 dance. Oh, oh shit. Oh. <laughs> See, when it says break a leg, <laughs> maybe don't actually fucking do it. <laughs> just saying. Just fucking saying. I'm just to do I don't know what to do. Okay, thanks. Janice then clutches her tray to her chest and watches us for a moment. Listen, Chase and TJ, why don't you come by my house again when you get the chance? I look up at Janice and see that she's got a strange look on her face, confused and worried looking. What's wrong, Janice? TJ's voice is full of concern. Did we do something wrong? No, no, you did everything wonderfully. I just want to have a talk about the way I acted the past few days. Janice lets out an exasperated sounding laugh. Not really sure what came over me, just now realizing how strange it all was. She glances at Carl. But we can talk about it later, in person. Enjoy your dinner! She bustles off, Trey still held against her body. Carl watches her go, stuffing a few fries into his mouth. What was that about? Um, the way Janice had looked at Carl makes me think she doesn't want him knowing about what had happened. I think she just feels bad about for making us work so much. I look over meaningfully at TJ. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe... <laughs> TJ quickly starts sucking on a straw. Well, she should. Janice sitting back in the booth, having taken out her brush and started grooming her fur on her face and head. I inconspicuously slide my plate a little further away from her. Well, once we finish, we can go get my car and head to the forest. As I lift my boy get to my take a bite, I look over at the counter and I see Janice leaning over a notepad. Her shoulders are shaking and it takes me a moment to realize that she's crying. Oh. And we're just gonna cut away from that. We're just, you know, she's crying. Well, it's fine. The forest is really just a patch of trees on the side of the road near Leo's house. While it's technically small, it still covers several acres, which is enough to get lost in. The sky is a soft blue now, just enough light to see by. See by. It won't take long before that won't be the case, and what the fuck? Shut up. Well, that won't be the case, though. I pull off to the side of the road to the a spot where I think the burr house might be. It's been well over a decade since the last time I've seen it. It's probably where the treasure hunt is going to end, considering the time that's passed. The burr house probably isn't even there anymore. We all step out of the door into the warm evening air. 
Carl folds his arms on the hood of the car and grins at me. See? Even with the sun gun, it's roasting. The least you could do is drive me home now. I look over at Leo's house, but his truck is gone. TJ catches my glance. I might tell him what's going on if we find something, even you want him to join us. Uh, TJ picks at his claws. It's alright. I give a quick side I give him a quick side hug as we step up to the edge of the trees. I can see why TJ doesn't want to tell Leo about this. He was right about Leo's pretending it didn't happen. I can't imagine it would go well for him if we told him about drudging up old Sydney scavenger hunts. Ugh! So where is it? Jenna looks into the empty ditch between us and the forest. Wrinkling her nose at the old scraps of garbage inside. Carl looks up and down the tree line, squinting. Kinda looks different now, but I think it's about here. It's only like ten feet in, right? Carl looks at me. Sounds about right. We can fan out and check all the trees that close that close that close to the road. TJ jumps across the ditch lightly, much more lightly than the clumsy hop I execute right after. I land unevenly on the opposite incline and windmill my arms as I lean back. Carl starts laughing before I even fall, but TJ reaches out and grabs me by the shirt, yanking me back up from the ditch. I fall into him awkwardly and quickly step back, brushing myself off, even though there isn't anything on me. Are you okay? I'm fine, thanks. I glare over at Carl, who's still laughing. Did you even try, man? Uh, he leaps over easily, clearing the ditch along with a few more feet. It's not fair, I'm an otter. Don't let that hold you back from achieving your dreams. Jenna elects to delicately step around the garbage before climbing up the other side. It's okay, you swim better than any of us, Chase. I sigh. Thanks, TJ. I turn back to the forest, which makes which is much darker than as the light struggles to filter through the branches and the leaves. Well, let's start before it gets too dark. As we spread out amongst the trees, I'm struck with how quiet it is. The only sound is the crunch of our feet on the dead vegetation that starts to fade as the others move further away from me. I zigzag through the trees, trying to get a look at their full circumferences. From what I remember, the birdhouse was a plain wooden thing that hardly stood out from the trunk it was attached to. We might not see it if we're looking right at it. While it's been a long time, walking between these trees does bring back some memories. We stopped coming here after what happened to Sydney, mainly because it was one of his favorite places to hang out. He liked to play capture the flag here. I can still remember how fast he was. How I'd only catch glimpses of his tail between the trees before he disappeared with the flag. His team won almost every time. The summer of 2002 was the last time we played. Sydney had even been getting along better with TJ then. It might have been the best summer of my life until it ha until it happened. It was almost like Echo saw us having too much fun and wanted to end it for good. Sydney had been still a Sydney had still been a dick though. The image of Sydney whipping TJ mercilessly with a towel we used as a flag comes to mind. I moved closer to the edge of the tree line before slanting back in again. Looking up between the branches, I see that the sky is darker blue now. Pretty soon it'll be pitch black. It was about this it was about this light the last time I was here. I'd come alone when I was ten, maybe nine. It's hard to remember now, but I think I'd gone there because I was sad. I'd had good memories of the forest, though I thought going there might make me feel better. I was standing in the forest waiting to see if I did feel better. It didn't happen, so I sat down on, in the leaves and started crying. I was there for maybe five minutes before I heard some branches creaking b b above me. I looked down, I looked and saw feet swinging around. This confused me, so I stood up and backed away, staring up as I slowly realized I was seeing a fox hung by his neck. That's, ah, a fox. Do we remember? That was uh, Jenna's ancestor, probably. Even now I can remember the way he looked, his overalls and his white shirt. His head had been tilted down towards me, his tongue lulling out of his muzzle, his eyes blank. I can even remember what looked like pinkish red blood on the white fur of his chin. Then I tripped over a branch, and when I looked back up, he was gone. 
I can't remember much after that, except that I had gone home and told my parents. That ended up with me seeing a doctor. They never found anything wrong with me, at least anything that might relate to seeing things. In the end, we were told that sometimes kids hallucinate, that it would stop happening as I got older. I hugged myself, feeling cold and a little scared now that I've brought up that old memory. Well, I know uh, that I was at the age where kids hallucinate most often. I still can't get out of my mind how real it had been. Still, that's not exactly what's giving me chills right now. Because I just realized that I had been... Uh, it had been... Because I just realized that that had been the summer after Sydney passed. That's why I was sad. Because I remembered how happy the summer before had been. So what Sydney wrote doesn't make any sense. Unless I'm going crazy. A creak behind me makes me jump and I whirl around, eyes scanning the branches, terrified of what I might find. But there's nothing there, just branches creaking in the wind. I stare for a while longer before a shout from afar, down, from far down the line of trees makes me jump. I found it! It's TJ's voice, high-pitched and excited. I shake myself out of my trance and start jogging towards where the lynx's voice came from. Maybe I've confused things and I'm just remembering things incorrectly. It's the only thing that makes sense. As I come up on the lynx, Carl and Jenna are already there, standing around the tree trunk. Sure enough, a little wooden bud house is tied to the trunk and with rusty wires. I can't believe it's still here. It does look pretty beat up. Jenna points to a little wooden plug in the opening. It's closed up. Think it's been closed this whole time? I don't know, maybe. TJ pokes at the plug with a claw, then grips around the edges with all, yeah, with all of his claws before gently pulling out the wooden cork-like thing out. A thick, sticky-looking trail of cobwebs follow it. We all stare at the dark hole that's revealed. Chase, want to reach in there? I'm sure there aren't any spiders. I shiver involuntarily. Uh, I don't really want to either. Jenna sighs before pushing past TJ. Bending over, mm -hmm -hmm, she picks up a twig and sticks it into the hole before swirling it around. When she, pull, when she pulls it back out, it's made a cotton candy-like cone of spider webs. She drops that and then takes out her phone, turning on the flash before holding it up to the opening. Well, we all wait anxiously for her to say something. There is something here. With that, she reaches in with her fingers. After that, a few crinkling sounds, she pulls a Ziploc bag, and inside is a folded up piece of paper and a blue comb! Holy shit! Holy shit, no way! Well, no one ever comes back here, so I guess it makes sense. He actually put a comb in there to make it rhyme! <laughs> Jenna makes a few jerking motions away from the birdhouse to get rid of the cobwebs. She looks around, the stick and the sticks then oh the then sticks it out to me. Since you read the last one. Okay. I glance at TJ, but he doesn't make any indication that he might want to read it. The bag is covered in what looks like dirt and cobwebs, a few clumps of both dangle from the bottom. I open it carefully, and when I pull out the paper I can tell it's been wet a few times. It's a little crumpled, but when I unfold it, the water damage isn't bad enough that I can't read it. Still, the paper immediately splits in two this time, and I have to hold them together as I read it. It's dark to the point where I have to use Carl to hold up his phone. Where I have to have Carl hold up his phone to give me some light. Good job, but that was a little easy, right? Next, we will find out how brave you are. I know this was already a scary test for Chase, but that doesn't count. Do you really remember? Get a what? Oh, fuck me. Get a flashlight and make sure Leo is with you. Here it is. Stay in school. It will be cool. We'll have fun in 301. I hope you don't die. Sid. What the fuck? We're all quiet for a moment, then TJ giggles. I look at him, but he's covering his mouth with a hand so I can't see him smiling. That's not really a riddle, is it? I smile. Go easy on him. He was a kid. Sorry. So the old school in three, room 301? I assume that's what he meant by a test of courage. Shoot! He went in there all by himself? I wouldn't even do that now. 
Yeah, that is a little weird. The feeling that something isn't right grows inside my chest. Well, we have to break the law to get in there. We'd be trespassing. Jenna glances at TJ because we all know TJ wouldn't break the law. Besides, it's getting late. Maybe we can go check it out tomorrow. One of us can go in for you, TJ. TJ looks up at the sky where stars are starting to twinkle through the branches. Well, if we're gonna trespass, we should do it at night, right? Jenna's mouth falls open. What? I mean, we don't have all that much time left here, so we should probably get as much of it done as we can. So, you're okay with breaking the law? Well, yeah, if it means we can finish this. We all stare at him. I, I don't know what else to say. I just really want to get this done. It feels right. We're quiet for a moment before Carl claps his hands together. Well, all right then, let's go. We've still got a few hours before I'm going to bed. Jenna sighs loudly. All right, but I want to get back before 10 so that I can finish my papers. Yeah, 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 don't worry. Onward! Carl marches ahead of us, taking a running leap to cross the ditch. Like a TJ who's still looking fidgety again. Hey, we'll finish this up before we have to leave, okay? TJ gives a small smile. Okay. Oh, that doesn't fucking look ominous at all. Carl says that a cop still patrols Echo randomly at least once a night. Because of that, we let Jenna sit out in the car and keep watch. If someone shows up, she'll text us, which should give us enough time to get to out the back of the school. It'll still look suspicious as hell, but as long as we're not caught on the property or have some sort of ex we'll, and have some sort of excuse, we should be fine. At least that's what Carl says. We stand there in front of the door, and I notice that a couple of chains hang loosely off the doors. No lock to be found. Well, at least that hasn't changed. Carl shrugs. Teenagers breaking all the time. No point in putting a lock back on every time. Carl gives the door a shove and it slides open very slowly, letting out an un unearthly squeal as it does. The three of us stand there, staring into the darkness. TJ fidgets next to me. Having second thoughts? No. His voice comes out in a crackly squeak that Carl snorts at. Just... Just so dark. Nighttime is a way of doing that, my man. Good thing I charged my phone before we left. Carl takes out his phone from his pocket and holds it up before turning on the light. Uh, mine's almost dead. We can share. Carl sweeps the light inside, revealing a graffiti co revealing graffiti covered walls and dirt covered floors. Nice. I look back and see Jenna staring at us from the car. She gives me a thumbs up. I inhale deeply. Well, let's go. I take out my own phone and step inside and TJ follows me. Carl stands next to us, spinning in a circle. Well, it's not that creepy. Okay, so the rooms here are in the 200s. TJ points up at the doorway next to us, a small label above it reading 203. So that means we have to go up one floor. Carl sweeps his light around and points at the staircase. Shall we? Those things better be stable. Carl points his light up at the staircase. I can see some graffiti up there. It should probably be fine. Graham leads the way, at first tentatively, setting a hoof on the first step before testing the next. Yeah, that's good. And with that, he strides up the stairs while TJ and I follow a little more hesitantly. Why don't they just demolish this place? Heard they wanted to turn it into a museum. Can't see why, though. Carl shines his light on the railing. That is funny. The old school in my town that has been my hometown that has been shut down got and part one of uh, some of the rooms got turned into a museum. That's actually pretty cool. Carl shines his light on one of the railing. The wood rotted and broken. Hey, do you guys remember when Chase saw someone staring out of one of the windows up here? Oh my gosh! Please don't talk about this right now. Do you even remember that, Chase? Uh, yeah, actually. That was a long time ago. I hardly remembered it, but I do remember seeing a dark form in one of the windows. I'd been positive it was just an object sitting in the room, but I had wanted to tell my friend that I'd seen a ghost. It was nothing like what I saw in the trees. Thinking about it is creeping me out, though. I'm seeing a trend! 
Stop! TJ whines as we reach the top of the stairs, then clearly trying to change the subject, points at, up at the door. Alright, 305, so maybe this way. Chase, let me see your phone. TJ takes it from me and points it up at the next door over. Yeah, 304, so the last one down. He hands me back my phone and stands there a moment. Carl chuckles. Want me to go first? You scared? TJ glares at him. Come on, guys, I want to get out of here too. Okay, okay. Carl leads the way again down the hall to the very end. There's more stuff in the way of the floor with a lot of desks and chairs. Carl keeps his light up, counting down the doors. Three, 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 two, and... Oh, 33, oh, fuck! TJ jumps a foot in the air and I point my light at Carl. What? Carl turns around sheepishly, rubbing his hip. Ran into this stupid desk, hurt like a mother... <laughs> really, Carl? <laughs> TJ clings to me, taking a deep breath. But here's the door. Carl points the light back up at the, above the door, and sure enough, there's a 301 up there. TJ and I stand next to him, both staring into the dark room. Hey, I think this might actually be the room you saw the thing staring at you from. Of course! Carl. There's a warning tone in TJ's voice. I rub my chin. Actually, yeah, I think it is. TJ sighs loudly and closes his eyes. Guys, please, can we just... Yeah! Ah! Carl thrusts his hands into TJ's side as he yells, sending TJ into a hysteric fit of screaming and grabbing onto me. I stumble as I try to keep the lynx from re rending my flesh with his claws. Oh shit, sorry, I... Ow! Carl reaches out to, I assume, comfort TJ, but gets backhand across the face in response. You ass! I watch the two of them with wide eyes, never having seen TJ so indignant. Carl stares back, a hand up to his cheek. Whoa. Alright, let's start looking. Fuck. You know what I'm starting to think? Okay, so Carl gets possessed with the soul of his ancestor. Jenna gets possessed with the soul of her ancestor. Maybe fucking TJ gets possessed with the soul of Sydney. Maybe. I don't know, because Sydney's aggressive. TJ's getting aggressive. I don't know. I'm probably reading way too much into it. Or it could be exactly true. I don't fucking know. Uh, as is, if nothing happened, TJ takes my phone and strides into the room. His tilt... Attention. <gasps> can't believe you slapped me. Carl calls after him, but gets no response. I smile, trying not to laugh as I walk past the ram. Can you? He asks me, rubbing his cheek as he follows me in. Hey, you asked for it. Probably not the best time to be scaring him. Yeah, whatever. What the hell are we leaving looking for anyway? I look around. From what I can see, there's not much left in the room. A few desks are pushed up against a wall, and aside from the chalkboard and a map on one end of the room, there's nothing else. I go over and stand by TJ on the other end of the room, stare, looking at the desks. There's not much in here, is there? TJ sweeps the light around the room, frowning. Not really. He points the light at Carl, who's on the other end of the room, by the chalkboard. Anything written on the chalkboard, Carl? Carl shine... I mean, shines. Yeah. He's lying on the board, then gasps. What? There is. It's a whole lot of dick. Carl steps to the side, pointing his light at the board, and sure enough, it's covered in countless drawings of dicks. TJ sighs. I mean, we're bound to hit a roadblock eventually. I trail off, staring at the window at the far end of the room where I see a small-looking box on the ledge. What's that? I point, and TJ shines the light over at it. A metal toolbox glints back at us. TJ immediately walks over to it, and I follow him. Carl joins us as TJ fiddles with the latches, popping them open. There's a small, cr there's a soft creak as he lifts the lid, a tray extending out as he does. And there, sitting on the tray, is another paper. There's no way. Yeah, that makes no sense. Why not? TJ gently picks up the note, handing me back my phone. Shine that on this for me, please. Someone would have had to taken it by now. Well, they didn't, see? TJ unfolded it and shows me more of the handwriting, the exact same we'd seen the other two notes. I frown, but I don't say anything more. Maybe it did just sit here for the past ten years, no one wanting another to bother with an old-looking toolbox. But this place was broken into regularly, with the whole point of being either graffitiing or taking stuff. Something, someone definitely should have taken it by now. 
this was an all. This was all on top of the idea that Sydney came in here as a little kid just to hide a note. Something isn't right, and I'm starting to feel uneasy. I don't have time to dwell on that, though, as TJ begins to read. To be continued, motherfucker! Motherfucker! Oh, shit! Forgot you existed! Alright, so that's the end of TJ's route for now. Uh, I believe an, an update came out a little bit ago. Uh, I haven't downloaded it yet. It uh, updated Jenna's route. Um, and I, I think it updated Jenna's and Flynn? I might be wrong, but um, just like we do with the other games, I'm going to check the most recent update, and if a route we have been on has been updated, I will check that before we move on to the next route, which will be Leo's route, because I don't feel like going to Flynn's route yet, and I've been wanting to do Leo's route the entire fucking time. <laughs> So, uh, I, I know Jenna's route got updated, so we will be doing that, at least. Um, and then we will go on to Leo's route, and we will see what that has to offer. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I have been the trained up professional, sitting here for an hour and a half, almost two hours. There was just no good ending point. I could have split this into, like, two episodes, but I just... I wanted to wait until the day was over, and I, I fucked it up. I, I should have stopped at an hour, but it, when I got to an hour, it wasn't a good stopping point. Now I'm just rambling to make the video even longer. Fuck. Bye. I, if you made it to this part of the video, it means you've seen the first part. The first time I did this... Unless you skip to the end, in which case I'm not going to tell you what the first one was. This one, if you saw that, tell me... Whether you like my beanie being purple, and if you knew there were words under it, it says uh, "I'm here for here for the booze." So let me know if you like my beanie, and if you knew there were words here, maybe even say the words "I'm here for the booze." Say that. Say that in the comments, and then we'll. I'll know that you made it all the way to the end, and you're a trooper! Or a cheater! If you have both the first one and this one, that's how I'll know. <laughs> and honestly, with an episode this long, you, you deserve a prize. And that prize is... Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. I really, really appreciate it follow me on twitter you get follow me on twitter and instagram those are probably the closest places you're gonna see like a more behind the scenes look at how i actually feel and uh, think um and until next time ladies and gentlemen i've been training up a professor bye bye uh.